So today is Saturday, October 30th, and of the four beings that live in this house, it is half of their birthday today. So it is my husband's birthday today, and it is my dog's birthday today. So it's a day of celebration here. So I'm not out at the farm this morning. We have a birthday lunch to go to and so forth. So today I am making soft sugar bricks for the bees. And the reason for that is you just want to have a little bit of insurance in the hive so that if they run out of the food that they've stored, that they have some extra. So this recipe for the sugar brick is not mine, so I'm not going to be going over the recipe. This recipe belongs to Stan at Texas Friendly Beekeepers. If you are ever curious about bees or you uh, want to maybe think about being a beekeeper or you are a beekeeper, especially if you're in Texas, check out Texas Friendly Beekeepers on Facebook. It's the best bee board uh, anywhere. It's the best, so check it out. So anyway, let's see. Hold on, I gotta go get this hot water. Anyway, so I think I have a buyer for the, uh, I think I have a buyer for the trailer. I'm going to reach out to him a little bit later today. And then I will get started selling the tractor, so that'll be, that'll be interesting. And also, I'm going to have my yard guy go ahead and start on uh, laying the water pipe all throughout the farm. So then I can get the orchard in before it gets too cold. So I'm very excited about all that. So the last few days I have been in Mexico, because even though I have a farm, I also have a full-time job. And that is, uh, we have legacy travel in Plano. And uh, I've been on a hotel advisory board. So uh, I've been talking about what makes people like a hotel and just marketing the hotel and just all sorts of things. Let's see here. All right, now Stan says that he mixes his with a mortar mixer. I don't have a mortar mixer. And he makes, you know, like 80 at a time, which I'm only making two. Because I just want to see how the recipe goes. And then I will, you know, I want to make one for each of my hives, which currently there are 13. So I will make more, but I just wanted to make two to start with. So I'm going to try it just with this mixer. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. So I think that looks like it might work. So we'll see. All right, he says to put parchment paper in these pans, and this should make two eight by eight pans. Oh, I should preheat the oven. Stand by. Again, if you want this recipe, you need to reach out to Stan on Texas Friendly Beekeepers.
people are sometimes surprised to hear that you have to feed your bees. Because, you know, don't bees survive in the wild and they gather their own food and whatnot? And yes, they do. But there's more to being a beekeeper than just like setting up a box of bees in your yard and letting it go from there and stealing honey from them. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that there are a lot of times of the year when there isn't food out there for the bees. And so what would happen in the wild is that, well, those colonies just wouldn't thrive or wouldn't even survive. And so as beekeepers, what we want to do is, you know, stack the odds in our bees' favor. So sometimes that means, frequently, that means feeding them. Uh, these sugar bricks, that's just kind of like extra insurance to make it through the winter uh, because you don't know how cold it's going to be or... Um, you know, what's even takes up more food is if it's warmer than expected. And so the bees are out flying, but in the winter, there's nothing for them to forage. So um, that even makes them go through stores faster. So you never know on a given winter how, um, how much food they're going to go through. So you just want that extra insurance so that you go into spring with strong colonies so that they can, you can have a good honey crop. That's the name of the game. I set a goal in 2020 to donate 200 pounds of fresh grown produce from my garden to a local food bank called Five Loaves in Saxe, Texas. And um, I was able to exceed that and I did 300 pounds. Well, then I had surgery at the end of 2020 and then we had really weird weather in the spring of 2020. So this year I'm a little behind and so I started a ton of broccoli seeds um, because you can grow it this time of year and they're good big heavy plants to help me make my goal So you'll see a lot of broccoli, but here. Let's see what's going on All right, so in this bed, so you'll see a lot of plants like this. This is of course broccoli now you can see some of these holes um, And where the leaves are chewed on It's these stupid Worms cut worms. I'll see if I can find them. Usually you can only find them in the morning that eat the leaves of those kind of plants and then they um, lay eggs and then the new ones are hatched and they eat the leaves and it's a mess. I'm not too worried about it this time of year because they um, they die off as it gets cooler or at least they're not active or something and so you'll see on subsequent beds I have them covered up that's uh, to protect them from those worms but I have left a few uncovered and again this time of year I'm not terribly concerned about it. Um, this is romaine lettuce and right there you see uh, green beans. So there's some beans, a couple more broccoli plants there. Now you'll notice that there's like railroad tracks in this bed that don't appear to have anything planted and that's because there's carrot seeds down there. Carrots are so hard to sprout. They're so hard. You'll put them in and nothing will happen and then months later when you've given up and gone on to something else and all of a sudden you have a bunch of carrots. It's the darndest thing. All right and over here you can see an example of the broccoli plants being covered up here. We'll take a look inside. You can see there's broccoli in there and they're not chewed up because they're in there. Those stupid cutworms, it's the uh, moths. There's these white moths that come and lay the eggs and if you cover them up then the moths can't get to it. There's another cover. You can see there are some of the green bean plants that got that came up under there. I'll take that off pretty soon. You can see like I don't know how well you can see that, but that broccoli plant's already pretty big. And then here you can see some head lettuce. Isn't that pretty? Romaine lettuce, head lettuce, green beans. I have just a couple of Swiss chard plants because my experience with Swiss chard is that you plant one and, you know, one plant will give you all the Swiss chard you could possibly need for months. So I just planted a couple of those. Here's another row cover with more broccoli. And again here, more broccoli, more lettuce. That's basically what we're doing here. Look, do you see this beautiful big broccoli plant? Isn't that beautiful? And it's not even eaten up because it's under the row cover. You leave them out, they get eaten up. Alternatively, you could use chemicals to kill those moths, but if you can do something as simple as cover them up, why wouldn't you do that? Isn't that pretty? These are some volunteer onions. Uh, from onions that have been here before. They shed seeds and then they just volunteer and come up on their own. So yeah, that's uh, that's the garden out here. 
And that is my sweet birthday girl. Hey, Miss Lace. She can't hear very well anymore and she can't see very well, but she's doing pretty good. Miss Lace, what are you doing? here what we have happening is sweet potatoes which we're getting close to the time of year when it'll be time to harvest these sweet potatoes now one thing I'm worried about over here is this bed is lower down and so it's easier for bunnies to get in so when I was first when I first planted them they just it was not taking off and so I had to put this wire here to keep the bunnies to protect the plant from the bunnies and um, I'm just wondering I'm not sure like does this plant does it make roots and therefore potatoes from where it touches the ground and if so all that stuff is held up from the ground so is that going to affect the harvest that we're going to get I don't even know so I guess we'll see you see lace in there whenever Lacey is overly interested in something it is usually a good clue that there's wildlife involved so there could very well be a bunny hat that had babies in there that's usually what attracts Lacey. She is all about Wild Kingdom. There's one of my peach trees. It still hasn't lost its leaves. I think it lost its leaves prior to now, last year, but anyway. And there's the other one. This peach tree hasn't done so well. But anyway, there it is.